As striped bass migrate north each spring, schools of them drop off along the way. Some summer in Montauk, while others stick to the waters around Block Island, Cape Cod, or Boston Harbor. The smart ones, though, if you ask me, don't stop swimming until they reach the pristine waters of Maine. On this trip, I'm headed north to Casco Bay to catch up with the stripers that swam through my home waters back in June. It's late summer, back to school season, and that means the start of fall run fishing in Maine. On this trip, I'll be leaving my kayak at home because I'm meeting up with Ryan Lilly and Dan McFedridge of Old Town Canoe and Kayak. They've graciously offered to show off their home waters and show off the newest addition to the Old Town Kayak fleet. The legacy of Old Town Canoe is deeply rooted in the rich history of Maine's outdoor and fishing traditions. Founded in 1898 in Old Town, Maine, the company gained recognition for its durable and reliable canoes. These were essential tools at the time for navigating northern New England's vast waterways. Their watercraft allowed anglers to access remote fishing spots and explore untouched wilderness. Throughout its history, Old Town has adapted to change while staying true to its heritage. By working with modern materials and manufacturing techniques, they have consistently pushed boundaries in design and technology. Innovation is obvious in their newest addition to the line of sportsman kayaks, the power-assisted EPDL Plus kayak that I'll be fishing from on this trip. But before I hop into my battery-assisted kayak and start cruising around Casco Bay, I'll need to hit the state's unofficial welcome center for anglers, Kittery Trading Post, for some last-minute shopping. Kittery Trading Post began as a one-room store and gas station where fur pelts could be swapped for gas. More than 85 years later, it's an outdoor recreation shopping destination, selling everything from kayaks to moose-covered flannel pajamas. While I can always use a new pair of pajamas, I'm only looking for some local intel and a few lures that might match what the Casco Bay stripers are feeding on. Word is that smaller bait, there should be some peanut bunker, unlike in these. They call it a twitching mullet, but that looks a lot like a peanut bunker to me. And maybe one that's a little more like a silver side or something like that. Some Z-Man. Yeah, I'll be snacks. We're gonna get some of those. Something pink. From Kittery, it's off for beers and fish talk with local fly fishing guide and acclaimed fly tire Ben Wally. You're gonna crush it tomorrow too. I, I hope so. You're I'm gonna excited. have fun regardless. I'm excited to see some uh, good numbers of fish out there. Yeah, from all those aspects. Especially coming up from the Cape, it's it's. Yeah. I'm excited to hear what you think of it. It's I I just love sharing it with people. And there's probably tailing stripers right outside right now, which has me antsy. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Ben. Really yes. appreciate you coming out and talking with Absolute us. Absolute pleasure. And, Thank you. Uh, next time you're down on the Cape, we'll definitely get you out fishing down there as well. Love that. All Always right. game. Thank you. Excited for the next day, we headed back to the motel room to make some last-minute tackle prep. The plan is an early wake-up to meet Dan and Ryan at the launch by dawn. Let's go get some gas station coffee. You doing hot or iced? Iced, definitely. Morning, Dan. Hey. Morning, guys. How are you doing? Good, how you doing? Good, good. You got high hopes for today? Uh, I was out on Sunday and got into a bunch of fish. Nice. A bunch of 25 to 35s. All just kind of around Lane's Island here. Yeah, should be a good morning. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? Yeah, how was that drive? Good. I only lost one hatch cover. <laughs> <Seriously>? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, dude. Good morning. How you doing, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, too. Yeah. Good 
With the sun rising and the tide starting to move, we barely had time to catch up before a school of feeding stripers demanded our attention. There's bait jumping. Lots of bait in here. What are you seeing for bait, Dan? Uh, a lot of sand eels, primarily. Any peanut bunker yet? Not that I've seen, but again, I haven't really been out a whole lot recently. Oh, we got fish out here. A lot of fish action. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, there's some bigger ones in the mix. Oh! oh. Come on! Hey, there's some, there's definitely some bigger splashes. <laughs> Come on! I didn't even move it. Didn't even move the lure. <laughs> Welcome to Maine. All right, thanks for putting us on the bike, Dan. <laughs> I saw yours blow up on top. Is that a, are you throwing yeah. a spook or something? Uh, I've got a, a bunker top water blocker. All right, back in fishing mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not hunting season yet. Ryan Lilly leads the marketing of Old Town Canoes and Kayaks, and he is the epitome of the Maine sportsman. A registered Maine guide, he hunts, fishes, and traps with his two sons. We've kayak fished together in Puerto Rico, on the east and west coasts of Florida, and across New England, including an annual striper trip on Cape Cod. This, however, was my first trip to fish his home waters in Maine. There's some fish over here. Fish everywhere. Not ten, 10 feet from the boat ramp. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. You guys ready for breakfast? Perfect timing. <laughs> Got the shot. Did you get one on the fly yet? No, I just, just pulled it out. I'm gonna see if I get a bigger one on this uh, sand deal. Oh, they're there. going out there. I mean, could you ask for a more visually compelling morning? Look at the scenery. There you go, Dan. That's going to be a blow up.
Look at all the small bait right here. See it dimpling? Just northeast of Portland, Casco Bay is similar in size to Buzzards Bay in Massachusetts. It's known for its many islands, and it was once described as having as many as there are days in the year. The actual number, depending on how you define island, is around 200. The bay is full of vast tidal flats where stripers feed on sand eels and other small bait fish. The shallow waters limit boat access, leaving much of the excellent fishing to smaller skiffs and kayak fishermen like us. It looked like there was a mix of sizes in there. Yeah. There were definitely the occasional bigger fish came through. That's the thing is, I've gone to schools where I'm catching 20s to 25s, but I'll get follows from 35s and then 40s. You just can't get them to turn. And there's not a lot of water in there, right? I mean, it looked like you could see rocks and sand. Oh yeah, so. we're, we're still, we're at three and a half feet right here. This is a mud flat an huh. hour ago. Ryan's such a freshwater bass fisherman, he always goes right to the juicy looking structure, yep. the shorelines. <laughs> That's how I did it too. This year I really figured out how to use side scan. It's yeah. just like so much more efficient. So general orientation, this is kind of heading like south towards Portland? Exactly, yeah. You can kind of see the power station there. Um, just follow that line, you'll, you'll in like two miles, three miles, you hit Portland. The main coastline runs along this way. You have two rivers coming in here, the Royal and the Cousins. And then you have the Harris Seacat coming in from right there. Mm -hmm. And this is all just a big sand flat estuary. Um, just tons of bait fish, lots of dynamic water. Where we're gonna go off the, the point here, off Lanes Island, you can literally see a clear current line of yeah. muddier water coming in from the rivers, Tide, tides coming in with you know colder, deeper water. It's great, I mean, if the fish are in, sa in shallow, you can fish all the sandy flats. If they're not there, I mean, you can go a mile that way and you're in 30 feet of water on deep structure. You have all these islands with rocky shorelines that drop off super quick. You kind of have all kinds of water right within a, a mile of each other here. This is a, a fishing area for where it's skiffs, flat skiffs and kayaks kind of excel. You're not bringing in a big center console. Absolutely. Here. You'll see a lot of boat traffic coming in and out of uh, the Royal River here. So when you get a channel enough. up into the river? You have a channel. You'll see the marker buoys on the other side of uh, the Lanes Island here. Um, they'll kind of stray from the channel when they can, when the tide gets high. But um, like right now, when we're in just a couple feet of water, um, you kind of have the bits just kayak skiffs and uh, mm -hmm. the occasional, you know, rower or a kayaker cruising around. Yeah. It is a cool island. This used to be Leon Leonwood Bean, the founder of L.L. Bean. His his private island that he used for duck hunting. Oh yeah. He donated to uh, a trust after he, you know, before he passed. And so now it's public access. There's two campsites on it. The group site you can reserve and then uh, first come first serve on this side here. Cool. Really cool. Close to shore. You can, like I, almost every time I'm out here I see deer swimming back and forth from the mainland to the islands. So you could kayak out here, camp. Fish. Yeah, yep. I've camped at that site a bunch, the big one down there. We've done photo shoots. Um, I'll come out in like November, December and camp out and do sea duck hunting so you don't have to just wake up and grab your gun and hunt. <laughs> so you got pretty used to using the side skin? I have, yeah. Especially around here where I know there's fish around. It's just, you know, locating them, especially if they're not feeding on the surface once you get to like mid morning. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I have a few spots, I'll just come and check first. And he said, it just saves so much time. You don't have to pick a piece of structure or a location apart for a half hour to figure out that there's no fish. You can just cruise by. It's funny how fast the seagulls found those fish. Yeah. Within like five seconds of breaking fish, all of a yeah. sudden, where did they come from? Yeah, they're super helpful out here. Seagulls and the turns. Kayakers use the birds to find the fish, and then the boats use the kayaks to find the fish. Right, I'm gonna cruise and uh, fork the side scan and see if I can find some fish. All right, we'll wait for you to find them and just show us where to cast. Sounds good. I take the cash tips. <laughs> oh, we got a fish busting straight out ahead. To your 11 o'clock, about 150 yards in front of you. Hey, how deep is it here, Dan? Four feet. Four feet. So I guess if you run over a fish, you'll know it. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I see him now. Oh, there's bait everywhere. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go with the Rappel of Spook. Call him up. Dan whistling at us? Yeah, they're busting over there. He's hustling. All right, Dan spotted something. Level five. Oh, look at him right behind him. Look at that. Got fish all around him. There we go. There you go. Nice. I didn't think you could resist that. They're a little picky, even though they're feeding heavily like that. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's not like a bigger fish. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, he's running. fish in this light. Glad I switched the back one to a single. Look at that. Perfect. That is a gorgeous fish. second main striper, but this guy's a little bigger. Really healthy fish in a beautiful place, beautiful light. Nice. All right, he's gonna go. Is that a classic uh, Zara spook? Is uh, yeah, what is it, Cotton Cordell? I don't know if you can see it from there, but that seam I was talking about, you can see it setting up. Yeah. It's like the fish kind of follow that around. One of my favorite aspects of kayak fishing with friends is that you're able to fish alone together. You can work blitzing fish as a group, like we've done all morning, or you can split up and explore some good looking water on your own. And among the islands of Casco Bay, there's a lot of good looking water. Hey Dan, I'm gonna go peek around this corner over here. Sounds good. But as much as you might wanna see what's around the next island, a school of blitzing stripers will always grab your attention. Holy What was that? All right, go. Was that Ryan or was that a fish? We got some serious blow ups happening behind me. Oh my gosh, tail slaps and let's get this. Let's get it. Oh look, 
there's Ryan. He saw those fish. A little bit more. I don't know if you, you can see that, but we got some fish blowing up right here. It's a nice one, too. I don't know why, but it doesn't feel like a good hook set. Fish! There's a whole school of them right here. Take my time on this one because it's, I just know it's not a good hook set. I saw this blow up. I was probably 300 yards away and I just heard it blow up behind me and I just saw tails and mouths. Oh yeah, that's a nicer fish. That is a nice fish. Let's see if I can try to land this one. And of course, you know, in the early morning I had a two hour drive and I forgot my net. Getting up at 3.45 will do that to you. You're going over a whole school that's been crashing right here. This is an upgrade. <laughs> it looked like a good fish. You could see it blowing up. Dude, all hell broke loose right here. I don't know, maybe 32. Oh yeah. Oh man, yes. We saw those fish blowing up. We start racing toward him and I was like, I bet Ryan sees him too. And then all of a sudden you came around the corner. You're gonna have to bleep me. I was like, holy <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I just, I just lost the fish at the boat, a smaller one. And I heard it blowing up and I just like, my legs are spent now. Cause I was <laughs> just, wish I had that e-pedal. <laughs> you got that closing speed though. When the fish start going off, it's like you're just. Oh, there oh, we go. Right Behind us? Yeah. I don't have e pedal, but I did have to do the pressure. You're up, Dan. Your turn. I don't know if I got this 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 lure from you guys. Freaking awesome! Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, look at him in the cove here. Yep. I just, yes! That's where, that's where I was headed. Oh, right here. There's a ton of oh. fish right here, too. Oh! Oh, I just do wait. All right. Get it, get it, get it. Somebody's got him. How am I not getting bit? There we go. There we go. There yeah. we go. I'm not either. Weird. You can, I know. They're a little picky. Sounds like a nicer fish. Yeah. Lighter rod, too. <laughs> <laughs> You. I've done this before. <laughs> Gotta be double jointed. Yeah, I went with the, I wasn't getting hit on the top water. I got ignored by a couple fish that followed it and swirled. What's that right there? What's uh, the, what's the lure you're throwing? Oh, Al, so I went to the Albi snack. Oh, I have those. White? Yeah.
There were bigger ones in there than this. Yep, there were. You made that look real big, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go over by side scan Dan. Side scan Dan. <laughs> he knows where the fish are. I know as soon as we get up here, they're gonna start blowing up back here again. So this pocket right here usually holds fish right where the bend happens. I don't know what it is about the underwater topography, but the fish usually hang out right here, so I'm gonna give this a try and see if I can browse one. I, I had one on a little bit earlier before they started blowing up behind me and I got distracted, went back, but this is usually good for a few fish. Oh, right there. Oh, come on, come back. You see him up against the shoreline? Yeah, I usually catch two or three right here and I just lost one current rips around this bend. Same current pulling through here. Yeah. You set yourself up ahead of it and just kind of drift back into it. Did you cast up in there? Oh, there you go. Come on, take it. Bait switch. Oh, oh, it's tailing. Come on, come on, come on. It's like they're just toying with it. Here we go, here we go. Oh, you son of a. It just mouthing it. Non committal stripers. I'm on. The morning's fishing was so good that I felt like I barely had a chance to take in the surroundings. When the sun got higher and the stripers took a break from feeding, I was finally able to get my first good look at this small piece of Maine's magnificent coastline. The many islands, the broad flats, and the vast open water with few other anglers or boaters in sight 
made it easy to see why these stripers choose to summer in vacation land.